Cool. Hello everybody, um, my name is Alan Reedy and in today's class we're going to be looking at the topic of roof and roof structures. Okay, here's a typical design of a nice um, featured roof, country design. And we can see the, slide, the slates, the coverings, and the nice stone finish in the front, okay? Now, uh, the learning outcomes in today's lesson, uh, learners will be able to identify the main functions of a roof, um, the difference between prefabricated trusses and a traditional cut roof, um, and also the function of the breather membrane and what coverings will go on the roof after it's pitched. Um, I'm just gonna hand out a little, there's questionnaires here, so if you'd like to take a questionnaire, take one and pass it on, and you can answer them throughout the presentation. Okay. So, the functional requirements of a roof. A uh, roof must be able to provide shelter from the weather, uh, provide thermal insulation, enhance the appearance of a building, um, and accommodate services such as uh, drainage, water, electrical, and provide structural stability. We want the roof to tie in, it's a triangle, so we want to tie it into two walls and make everything rigid. Um, and we stand all with, or all live dead and wind loads and including snow loads especially winter time if the snow will be coming down we have to incorporate that into our design as well now so the functions of the roof weather resistance thermal insulation stability dur durability drainage we want to get rid of that water the water pitch so we need a good pitch to drain that water okay now and here we have the different types of roofs so we have our flat roof we have our lean to with mono pitch the butterfly, these be more typical to Europe, maybe Spain, France, you'd have the, the butterfly roofs, and then we have the hip roof, the common roof in Ireland. And here we have just a diagram of the typical roof terminology. So we have the common rafters here, and we have a valley rafter here, with the jack rafters, okay? And then we have the wall plates going around as well. Now, construction of roofs, roofs come in two, Two main parts so we either have prefabricated trusses or we have cut roofs okay so the difference is the prefabricated trusses are made off-site they're made in a workshop and they are usually made from um, uh, gang plates nail plates and they're prefabricated inside a workshop and then they're carried on site and craned up into the building and fixed in place they're normally used in housing estates um, just because it's easier it's more economical uh, and more sustainable to use them um, whereas cut roofs would be more in a countryside setting, more of a one-off housing, um, where the, the, the pitch roofs um, come into effect. Now, here we can see it, the diagram behind me, the prefabricated roof truss. As you can see, all the bracing, everything is triangulated. That's what we want to see. The strength is in a triangle. So that's just a typical example there. And yeah, if you can see that now, that's not great. You can see the gang plates, the nail plates, and all the joints. Okay. Now, as I said earlier, constructed in factories and assembled off site, trusses are built jointed, intuitive, galvanized steel plates, stop it from rusting, any moisture prevents that. Bracing is placed lengthways and diagonally to stabilize the roof. So they're thrown lengthways and diagonally just to keep everything tied in. Now, and here's an example of our traditional cut roof. You'd often see this in a country setting. We have our dormer windows here, we have our fascia, we have our valleys, valley boards, and our jack rafters and our gable ladders as well tying everything in there'll be straps in here as well to tie your gable ladders into your concrete block okay now so the traditional cut roof each element is individually cut as i said it is more economical in, in rural areas um the attic space is generally more accessible and then another point with the traditional cut roof it's much easier to convert to that later stage than a uh, truss roof you're not supposed to cut a truss roof it's, they're really they're engineered not to be touched, so it's it's definitely a better option if you're going to convert in your attic at a later stage to use a traditional cut roof. Um, yeah, the house design usually incorporates internal load bearing wall, and as I said before, triangulation of roof members improves the structure. We're trying to get that triangle shape to improve and tie everything in together. Okay, I'll just touch on this the roof covering. So, can anyone tell me um, what type of coverings would be on a roof in Ireland? What would we have? Uh, tiles. Tiles, yeah, perfect. Slates. Slates, yeah, natural slates, yeah, perfect. Okay, galvanized sheeting as well. Okay, perfect. So here we have, you can see it there, the cross section. So we have we have our wall here, our outside wall. We have our, our soffit board, soffit lat, fascia board. We have our ventilation, very important. We want air to come in and circle it up here. We leave a space for the insulation just to leave that air to come up. We have our battens here 
and then we obviously start on the battens and then cover up okay and remember we have the breather membrane is in here the breather membrane is just over the rafter and underneath the battens okay so as we're speaking the underlay the, the very first uh, process of the roof covering is to get the underlay on and excludes any rainwater and it penetrates the roof or the tiles and it's a breathable membrane it means it allows the air to flow but it doesn't allow the moisture to come in okay it's laid in the ease first with a lower edge of 50 mil at the gutter and row should be lap 150 mil minimum the lap depends on whether you're using tiles or slates it'll vary and um it's actually required now that you need a DPC lining just to, to run your first under your first underlay just to give it a bit of extra protection. Okay. Now, and here's another cross section here. We can see our wall plate here, and we have our gable rafter. And you know what? There's a nice uh, fillet piece here. This is very important to stop the so the water. If any water comes in, it'll run down here along your membrane. It stops the ponding, so your fillet piece will direct that water off. We want to get that water off as soon as possible. Okay. So I brought a little model in here. Today, just to show you the principle of the actual roofing design. So here we have, I'll show the cross section here. So here we have, there's our rafter, okay? And here we have our battens, two, three, four, okay? And there's our fillet piece, okay? So your underlay will go here, on, on top of the fillet piece, and down here then into our gutter, okay? And there we have the slates, okay? So there's three holes in the slates. We have one, there's one under there, for the two, Packs, and we have a cramp in here. The cramp in is copper and it's pushed down and eventually oxidizes. You don't even see it afterwards, okay? It's usually made of copper, so it will oxidize. Now, so that's our, there's a lap here. This is very important on this part because um, there's a minimum requirement for the slates to overlap. So the minimum requirement from here, okay, to the, from this point to the next point is 100 millimeters. We need 100 millimeters um, of an overlap, and that's the stop the water from coming back in, right from here. So we want to get the, that water off the roof as as fast as possible. Now, the only time it will change is if your pitch of your roof isn't steep enough. So if we have a lower pitch, something like a lean-to roof maybe, then it's recommended that you increase the lap from 100 mil to 125 mil, even more, 150 in places, okay? Depending on the roof, okay? Now, okay, let's put that aside. Does anyone have any questions? No? Okay. That's perfect. Right. Now, we were talking about roof coverings. So, the tiles and slates can be placed uh, into one of four categories uh, clay and concrete tiles, fire or cement slate, concrete slates, and natural slates. Okay. Here we have just an example of clay and concrete tiles, fire or cement slates, and concrete tiles. You recognize them from home? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Insulation, okay? So as I said, they're installed in courses, rows from the east. You start with the bottom and work up. And secure using nails for the holes provided. Uh, two pins and a cramp pin. Um, normally it's every second course. Now, every second course only applies to tiles because of their weight, so you just nail every second course. Uh, slates have to be nailed every course. And as I said, the head lap, minimum of 100 millimeters, can be up to 150, depending on the pitch, okay? Ridge tile. Is a tile, uh, it's put on the ridge basically just to, to, as a capping to cover it. It's usually bedded in and a half round and it's dyed mortar, bedded in with mortar, and then it's pointed in with dyed mortar just to blend in with the rest of the roof. Okay, and here we have it here on the hip. So there's your, your ridge cap on your hip, and there it is on the main roof. Okay, and here we have our valley. So this valley, we have our, lead, we have our valley board under it, and then we have runs of lead. And then it's tiled in here. Okay, so we tile it in here, and there's a, a minimum of 100 mil left, and it should be done nice. And then it's pointed afterwards with mortar, okay? To stop any water from coming back in. And here we have it finished. No, nice and neat. As I said, that's just cut there, and that will have to be pointed afterwards. And it's always a good idea to turn up your lid, just in case you get heavy rain, and turn it up that way, okay? No, roof ventilation. Very important, very topical at the moment. So it's important, we want to vent our roof. We want to stop from mold and um, from dry rot, especially. So ventilation removes water vapor, prevents condensation, okay? And um, here we have here, it's the, a cold surface meeting a warm surface and that um, develops uh, condensation, okay? 
Now, here's another sketch too. That's that's basically what I showed you earlier, just the model. And we can just see our, our roof vent. So we have the vent here and our soffit board. The air comes up, insulation is pushed back, and we want to get a nice flow, okay? Inch or attic space in between your, your battens, okay? And here you have it here, the roof vent and the soffit. Now, okay, we'll go back over our vision questions from earlier, okay? Okay, can someone, anyone ask, answer me, list the three functional requirements of a roof? Uh, to keep the weather out. To keep the water out, yeah, weather. Uh, to keep the heat in. Heat in, what else, what else do we say about? Uh, 